So this is a new part of the series Cognitive Devicing, which I created this channel to cover. So let's go over this scenario. A 10-year-old child who is a known case of epilepsy is brought to the ER by his mother because he had a seizure about an hour ago. So in the ER, they are seen by the pediatrician. He takes a history and a physical and sees the vitals. As this is all happening, the patient who was uh, in the post-ectal state, he starts to have another seizure. So um, the physician now starts with the ABCs and a glucose check and establishes uh, IV axis. And later on, he starts lorazepam. The patient recovers and he gets a little bit better and the seizure is aborted. The physician goes back to his desk to start writing the notes and the, and the admission file. A little bit of time passes and then he looks again over the vitals and he notices that uh, the patient has fever. Not only that, but the mother was saying that the child actually has been complaining of a headache starting from that morning. He realizes that he has made a mistake and he missed the probability of him having this seizure not actually due to his epilepsy, but actually due to another pathology, which is meningitis. So the doctor goes back to the mother and because he was interrupted from his earlier history because of the uh, seizure that the patient had, he continues asking the questions that he had previously ignored. So uh, he realizes, of course, that he had fever, headache, and he vomited also once. The uh, further evaluation is carried out, a lumbar puncture is done, and he is really diagnosed with meningitis. What happened here is called the posterior probability or known case bias, that is what I like to call it. And it is the phenomenon where a physician may overestimate the probability of a disease just because he had a similar diagnosis previously. So it is the expectation that the future will be much more affected by the prior probability than it truly is. So he thought just because his, this patient had prior seizures due to epilepsy, all of the future uh, seizures as well should also be caused by epilepsy, which was not the case this time because it was meningitis. Because any normal human uh, can have meningitis, any normal child can have meningitis. And this can also cause a seizure. Just because this patient had epilepsy, which can also cause seizures, does not negate the probability of him also having other diseases that can cause uh, seizures like hypoglycemia, meningitis, or um, anything else really. Like a space occupying lesion in, in the brain. All of these can also present as a seizure. Of course, the most likely diagnosis given a seizure in this patient is uh, epilepsy. But paying some more attention to the history and uh, thinking back to consider other probabilities is also very helpful in such a case to avoid the posterior probability or the known case bias. Just because he's a known case in a certain disease does not mean he cannot have a new diagnosis. Now there is another error that this doctor could have made and it is known as confirmation bias. And confirmation bias in psychology, uh, it's defined as our tendency to look and seek evidence that supports our beliefs while ignoring or discounting evidence that points in the other direction. Um, so in this case, for this doctor, he could have seen this patient with a known case of epilepsy and seizure, but now he has a fever and he could have downplayed the importance of this fever by saying that it's, it's just due to a common cold, for example. Or he could have heard about the uh, headache from the mother's history and he could have downplayed it by saying that it's due, due to her being neurotic or too worried about her son and saying yes to all the questions in the uh, history taking process. So if he was really just focused on diagnosing epilepsy and status epilepticus, then this confirmation bias would have stopped him from uh, uh, thinking about other differentials. And there is actually some trivia here. The confirmation bias is the reason behind the Q word or the quiet word in the emergency department. Uh, it's widely known that the word quiet in the ER is a taboo uh, because 
often juniors or medical students when they are in the ER maybe it's early morning or late at night and there are not really that many patients uh, and because he's really enthusiastic about seeing new patients and, and new diseases he says to his seniors and to his colleagues it's really quiet today and everyone starts yelling at him why did you say that why did you say the key word and now patients start flowing in and filling the beds because he said this word so actually Confirmation bias is playing right here behind the scenes because the physicians or the doctors in the ER now start noticing the patients more after the Q word has been said. But of course, if you, if you do a statistical analysis of the day throughout, whether you said the Q word or not, it's not really going to manipulate patients into coming to the ER. But it's mainly the others or the workers there noticing the patients more uh, after hearing that Q word. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful to you and see you next time with a new bias.